Today I'll be showing you how to use the new input system along with the player input manager in order to make simple local multiplayer. So right now I'm on my keyboard and then when I press on my controller, you can see that it spawns a new player and then it also adds a split screen effect to it. So now I can control two players at the same time. And I want to make you aware that the split screen support does not work with Cinemachine yet. So if you want to implement split screen with Cinemachine, you'll have to do your own custom solution in the meanwhile. All right, so let's get started. First, go to Window and Package Manager and make sure you have the input system installed. So go to Packages, Unity Registry, then go down to Input System and click Download or Install down here. And a pop-up will come up and just click Yes so that it restarts your editor to apply the new input system. And in my scene, I've just made a simple cube with a floor and that'll be our player. So I'm going to go into my Scripts folder and I'm going to right click and create a new input action and I'm going to call it Player Controls. Double click that. All right, so let's add in some controls for our player. So let's keep it relatively simple. For our action map, I'm just gonna name it player, our action map. Our action map is just a group of controls and our actions are our controls. So for our new action, we can press F2 and name it movement since we wanna move around. And at the top, let's add a new one and let's call it jump. For our jump, you see we have the action type of button, which is correct. We want to press a button and jump. So then we can go down to no binding and add in a new path, which is the control that this corresponds to. You can press listen. I'm just going to press spacebar. Then for our movement, I'm going to change the action type to pass through and then the control type to vector two because we're going to be moving with the WASD keys in two dimensions, which is the X axis and the Z axis. Then under the movement, you can click the arrow and delete the no binding, right click, cut, and then let's add in a 2D vector composite on that movement and let's call it WASD. For our up, let's select it and for our path, listen and I'm going to press W and just do the same for all the others. So for down, listen, S, left, listen, A and right, listen, D. And so the 2D vector composite will return a vector 2. The left and right will be the X axis and the up and down will be the Y axis. If you're pressing up, for example, you're pressing W, it will return 1. If you're pressing S or down, it will return negative 1 so that you can know which direction the player is going to walk in. All right, and so this is the important part. So we have this control scheme. So this is for one player, right? But let's say we want to add another player. So go up here into our control schemes and let's add a new control scheme. In this case, I'm going to just have a keyboard one and a controller one. You can have a two keyboard ones so that one person can play with the WASD keys and the other can play with the arrow keys. And then under the list is empty, press that plus button and let's add in the keyboard. And then you can see under requirements, you can put this control scheme to be either required or optional. I'm just going to be leaving it as required and click save. And you can see that now our actions have a new string here. It says keyboard and you can see it says use in control scheme when we select one of those controls. So you can select the ones that you want to use that use the keyboard. In this case, all of them use the keyboard, but let's actually add in another control scheme and let's call that controller or you can call it gamepad. And then on the add button here, click gamepad. And I'm going to add in a generic gamepad. It works with the Xbox one as well. If you want a specific one, they have some here. And I'm going to put optional. Save. And then you can see that we have two options here now using control scheme keyboard or controller. So I'm just going to select keyboard for all of them. And you can see that they start to disappear. And that's because we're in the controller scheme. If you go up here and click the keyboard scheme, then you'll see all your keyboard actions. You can also click all control schemes to see all of your control schemes. And so now let's add in a controller scheme for the movement. So let's add in a binding. And for our path, we can click gamepad and left stick or whichever control that you want. And I'm going to click controller here. For the jump, I'm going to add a new binding. And then you can actually listen and press the button on your controller. And you can see it has button south for the gamepad or A for the Xbox controller. I'm just gonna click button south. Be sure to click the controller scheme here, as well as in the left stick. All right, so save your asset. And now let's actually apply this to a player. So we're gonna be doing this a little differently. We're gonna be using a player input component. So on our cube or our player, which I've renamed it to player, we can add in a player input component and I'm just gonna move it to the top. And then we can select an input action asset with the circle on the right and click the one we just created. Then you can select a default scheme. I'm just gonna put keyboard for now. 
And you can also choose a default map. We only have one though, so player. And here is where we want to change the behavior. So for the behavior, I'm gonna be using invoke unity events. Since it's the easiest, you can use any of these options though. And so this will invoke unity events when we trigger an action on our controls. You can either send messages, broadcast messages, or invoke C sharp events. So you can open up events and then player, and you can see that we have our movement and jump callback context here. So let's make a script with functions that will be called when we execute either a movement or a jump. So right click, create a new C sharp script. Let's call it player controller. All right, and so as I do in all my videos, I'm gonna go to the character controller move Unity documentation page, which I've put in the description. I'm gonna copy their code and I'm gonna paste it in mine. A few things I like to change. I like to put these variables at the top and I like to make them a serialized field just in case we need to change them in the inspector. Then up here, I'm gonna remove these two using statements and up here, I'm gonna say require component type of character controller. So this will add in a character controller automatically when we add in the script to a game object. And so then in the start function here, instead of add component, we can say get component since it will automatically be added for us. And so here is the main part of the controller. First, we check if the player is grounded. If it's grounded and the Y velocity is less than zero, then set it to zero because we're on the ground. Then here we get our movement axis and we move the player. This rotates the player in the direction that they're facing, which I'm actually gonna remove since I'm not gonna use that for this video. This one gets the jump button and applies physics to it, and this just moves the player if they're jumping and according to gravity. So let's adjust this to use the new input system with our events that will be called. So you see that in the update function, we get the input controls. However, since we're gonna be calling unity events and we need to have functions that take in that input action so that we can read what the controls are, we're gonna be assigning the input in those functions and then doing all the logic in the update. So let me show you what I mean. So let's do a public void on move and a public void on jump. And then down here, let's say private vector two movement input equals vector two dot zero and let's do private bool jumped equals false. So here we're just keeping track of our input. So then here we have to take in the control values. Up here we have to say using unity engine dot input system. Then here in the onMove function, we can say input action dot callback context. And you can just name it context. And same for the on jump. So this is the callback function that is called when we trigger those inputs. And then very simply in the onMove function, let's set the movement input equal to our context dot read value. And let's read in that vector two. Same for the jump. Jumped equals context dot action dot triggered. So I'm using triggered because it returns a Boolean true if it's been triggered on that frame. If not, you would have had to get a float value and convert it. All right, and now that that's done, let's update our update function. So instead of if input button dot get button down, let's just replace that with jumped. And for the move, let's just do new vector three movement input dot X. And for the Z axis movement input dot Y. All right, so then in our player, let's add a new component and add in a player controller. And I'm just gonna move this more to the top for ease of access. And then our character controller, make sure to put the min move distance to zero or else it'll have some trouble jumping. And then under our player input, we can go to events player, and then we can add in a new one for movement and jump. Let's drag in our player controller for each of those. For the movement, let's go to player controller on move. And for the jump, player controller on jump. All right, so let's test it. So now I can move around and I can jump. Awesome. So let's add in the local multiplayer, which is very simple. So I'm just gonna right click and create a new folder for our prefabs, prefabs. And let's drag in our player. We have to have a prefab of our player. And so we can remove our player from the scene now. Now let's right click and create an empty game object. I'm gonna name it player manager. And I'm gonna add in a player input manager component. 
So you see there's a notification behavior here. You can do the same thing here. There's events. So you can call a player joined event and a player left event. So certain things happen when a player joins or leaves. Then we have the joining behavior. I'm just going to leave it as is, which is that it joins players whenever a random button is pressed on that controller or control scheme. You can also join when a specific action is triggered. And so you can add one manually here. So you can add a binding here and you can double click it and add in a path if you'd like, or you can use a reference to one that you already made previously, or you can join players manually using their API, which you can see here, they have a join player function that you can call and you can pass in the control scheme and the devices that you want to pair it with. I'm just gonna leave it on the first one. And so I'm just gonna drag in the player prefab in there. You can also limit the number of players and you can also enable split screen, which I'm gonna leave it enabled. Another thing that I want to mention is in the player input, there's something called an auto switch. So this is if you want the players to switch between controls freely. So if you're on the keyboard and you suddenly start to play on your controller, it'll let you switch. However, since we're playing a local multiplayer game, I'm going to leave that disabled. All right, so let's click play. If I press on my keyboard, you can see that now I have a cube moving around. And then when I press on my controller, you see that now our controller is moving around. And so it's not split screen because there's no camera associated with the player. You see that in the player input, it has a camera field and we haven't filled that out. All right, so where are we gonna get this camera? Well, luckily I've already made a smooth camera tutorial. So I'm just gonna take the code from that one, create a new C-sharp script and call it camera follow. And you can follow along there or if you have your own camera, you can paste it in. So I'm going to paste in my camera here and you can see that we have a target that we want to follow along with the speed and the offset that we want to follow the player at. So I actually recommend dropping that player into the scene, creating a new empty game object called camera follow player. Then we can add in a camera game object as well as the camera follow. And so you see when we click our player, it actually needs a camera in order to work for the split screen. So we can actually do a little hack around this. So right click and create an empty game object. We can call this player parent. And so one thing that we can do is drag the player as a child of that player parent. And we can also drag the camera follow as a child. And then for the camera follow, we can assign the player to that target and adjust the values accordingly. I'm just going to put negative 2.5. And then for the player, we can assign that camera in the player input. And so then we can just save that prefab, delete it from the scene. And then for the player manager, instead of the player prefab, let's add in the player parent prefab. Make sure you don't have maintain aspect ratio checked unless you want it to be checked. Make sure you have the screen rectangle set to one and one on the width and height. And so when you press play and you have this guy moving around, you press play, then you have this guy moving around and voila, you're done. I'm going to go into that prefab though and set those values a little further away for the camera offset because it's very close right now. So now it's at negative 7.8. So now you can see that we can clearly see our players walking around having some multiplayer fun. And this is very buggy, not gonna lie. Sometimes it adds players for you more than you have or more than you need. You can set a fixed number of players here, limit number of players. You can also make your own custom system instead of using the player input manager and the player input. But this is the easiest way to get a simple local multiplayer started with not much work. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I want to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. It really helps me make these videos. And I'm actually almost at my first goal for Patreon, which is awesome, which is a Q&A. So once I reach that goal, I'll be making a Google form that I'll post on my Discord and the YouTube post thing. I don't know what it's called. And you can ask questions there, although try to keep it not that personal. More general questions and questions related to game dev. But you can ask me what my favorite color is. <laughs> and I want to thank my new patrons, Becco and Chris in the enthusiastic tier. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you're interested, the link is in my description for my Patreon. I offer source code, early access, and an exclusive Discord chat. And if you haven't already join my discord chat you can post questions there or ask for help or post memes so thank you so much for watching and see you next time